back at the bench early first week of June. Get the penguins out of the way. Got a couple of blades here. So you're probably wondering what this video is going to be like or what it's about. You saw the title. Today I want to talk about bevel angle. I would like to take today to spend some time to talk about that geometry down there at the bevel. When I first started out, I didn't really understand, you know, too much uh, about the parts of the razor and the this and that. And there were a lot of people who said a lot of stuff and it, a lot of it was confusing to me. You know, so like here, here's this blade that's out of my bench, You're like whatever. And, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick up the bevel, but like down here, right? Running all along that shiny part, that's a bevel, right? And those of you who knew it was a bevel, try and remember when you didn't know that. Okay. Cause I've seen people ask, you know, Hey, what, what is the bevel? Like, so why is that important? Well, when you lay your blade on the stone. You have a flat stone. You have a spine, right? And the spine is back here. And then you have the hollow, the grind, and then that part that rides on the stone, that's your bevel. All right. So one of the topics that kept coming up uh, early on was setting the bevel. But I noticed that, you know, for example, you have two different blades. One is really big. One is not so big. Like, you know, this setting the bevel thing, like what's going on? Well, every razor is engineered in a way, or it should be, you know, um, where the spine thickness, the thickness of the spine, okay, is such that it keeps the bevel at a certain angle while you hone it wears here and then the blade wears there in time the dimension from here to here decreases from where and because the width is also decreasing because it's also on the stone theoretically they match up it's not a perfect world it doesn't go that way sometimes sometimes it wears more here wears more there you know whatever people are involved and you wind up with uneven wear it's a razor it's not you know, you notice it, it's not stamped like, you know, NASA on here, right? It's, <laughs> it's not a space shuttle. It's just a razor. One of the things that I found to be like critical to my happiness in this world, in this milieu, in this community that like I'm a part of is always remembering on a daily basis that the only thing like really all of this is all about is removing hair from my face. That's it. You're not saving the world. You're not, you know, breathing life into dying people it, it we, we're not dealing with iron lungs or anything like that just a razor just shaving you know i can take one of these razors right super speed 1958 put a five cent blade in it razor costs about 10 bucks actually this one was free <laughs> long story and uh give myself a, a you know bbs shave it'll work I get longer lasting, smoother shaves out of this. Yeah, sure. But it's, it's shaving, man. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, if I shave with this or I shave with this and then I go out to the park, I have the same day. You know what I mean? So I keep that up front. So anyway, a bevel angle. Uh, in my early days, you know, I, had, I, I went on some forums and there was a guy there and he kept saying bevel angle doesn't matter. But then there were other people who said bevel angle does matter. So I started looking into it and I started getting myself educated about, you know, the geometry of the blade, you know, and okay. So here's a little drawing that I just happen to have handy. All right. Um, th th this is like, if I just took a blade that was a wedge and I just snip cut it and looked at it on an angle, it's like cross section, right? So here's your spine. Here's the top of the spine down here is the uh, apex of the cutting edge and then all along here right that's where the bevel is right so the section if, if you just like took a laser and you just cut off the bevel part what you wind up is something like this right 
And that is a triangular prism shape is what that's called. A three-dimensional, it's a triangle when you look at it on the end and it's three-dimensional, it carries all the way through. Um, so anyway, so it's this little triangle right here that is what I'm, I'm focusing on, you know, and trying to figure it out. And I did some research and I found out that um, the 17 degree bevel is supposedly something that's like sort of middle of the road and what people are looking for, you know. And reasons for that vary greatly, but it just turns out that a lot of razors seem to have a bevel angle in that ballpark. So I got, I have a lot of calipers and micrometers just from another hobby and I broke them out and started measuring stuff and checking and insurance shit. A lot of them were around 17 degrees. A whole bunch that were really worn weren't. But for the most part, the average was around 17 degrees, just the way it mapped out. Now the person who said that this angle, this would be your bevel angle, right? He said that 17 degrees wasn't important. He said it doesn't matter, that any bevel angle is fine, blah, 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 blah. So I started looking into like why he would say something like that. It turns out he sells edges and he tapes all of his blades. So like when you bring, you know, tape into the mix, if I can find it, your spine is now thicker. So when you make it thicker, you're raising it up and you're increasing the bevel angle. So he keeps saying it doesn't matter because this is how he hones. And if he said it mattered, then maybe people would think he wasn't sharpening things as as, as fine as, as they could be. And people put tape on it to protect, you know, from creating spine wear. You know, you have spine wear here from riding on the stone. This gets bigger as time goes on. People tend to think it's ugly. So... You know, this whole thing, this whirlwind with, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, you read people tell you, oh, well, I won't use tape because my edge won't be as sharp. All right. Let's go roundy, 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 round. Everyone's got an opinion. Lots of people talking. People speaking in absolutes. No one's giving me an exacting answer about anything. I said, okay, fuck it. So I got myself a boatload of razors off of eBay, and I started honing my butthole off, all right? So I can tell you, I've taken, I don't know, over two dozen razors, okay? I have taken razors, and I have put them on diamond plates, and I have taken the spine down. I have taken razors from 22 degrees, like a gold dollar. I have taken it from a 22-degree bevel angle. I brought it down to 15 degrees and then walked it back up to 22 degrees by using layers of tape. Okay. It's miserable work. Okay. But I get like that because I spend a lot of time honing. So this is like where I'm going to focus my energy. And, and I've done this over years. I've been doing this for a while and I've done it like so many times. I like, I'm never doing it again because I already know what the answer is. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt. Factually, a razor that has a 22 degree bevel doesn't shave well for me. A razor that has a 17 degree bevel, that same razor with a 17 degree bevel, all else has to be equal. I'm talking about honing the same way, same progression, da 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 da. Okay, working with this one razor, right? 17 degree bevel on that razor is going to shave me better. When I get down to like 16, 15, 14 degrees, like a Sheffield, right? Most Sheffields, a lot of Sheffields won't hold a 14 degree bevel. Steel, is too soft to maintain that angle. So it winds up wearing too fast. So that's the story there. So there's that. So, you know, I read papers on sharpening and a lot of papers on sharpening and, and a lot of people's findings. And one of the things that people talk about in the course of setting bevels All right, this is apex, this is the bevel. All right, so we're talking about here, and it's backwards for you, but I, I, I don't know, I, I could, I suppose, <laughs> 17 degrees, right, is that close? Yeah, oh, there it is. Anyway, so 
if you decrease this, all right, it, it'll start to feel like it's a little sharper. So people talk about edge width, okay? People start talking about the width of the edge being synonymous with sharpness. And this is true in many, uh, with many edge tools. Where's the edge there? A little easier like that. So if this is 15 degrees, all right, and then this is 17 degrees, and then, you know, that's 20 degrees. Theoretically, edge width, okay, is going to be thinner with the smaller angle, greater with the larger angle. Makes sense, right? And, you know, people talk about, you know, cutting ability, if you show up an axis, I do sometimes, and, you know, you want a 25 degree angle, the, the axe will do great on dry wood, but maybe not wet wood. So you bring your bevel down to 20 degrees and it cuts wet wood better. So it's a matter of what are you cutting? What's your bevel angle? You know, and you know, you want to talk about edge width. Where is edge width? Okay, so if this is your apex, it, there's no scientific engineering based definition for sharpness. Okay, there's just like a lot of data and a lot of measuring going on. All right, so for me, just to like prove points, if this is the whole bevel and this is the apex, I like to measure edge width here at um, three microns behind apex. That's UM, all right? Microns, really small dimension, all right? So when I'm talking about edges, and edge width, that's a standard, right? So the dimension across the bevel in that in that particular spot. Right? So far as dimensions go, you're talking about a right angle triangle calculator, and then you just double your whatever, your base width. So for example, and I have some post-its here. Hold on. All right. My house, my life is post-its. All right, so here, here I have something. So this is actually, so if I, I'm just going to do a dotted line here, all right? So that whole triangle, that big triangle, that's your bevel. That's your entire bevel, all right? This, this line right here that I have marked B, B for base, H for height, H here is the, this is apex and the degree is 20. So if the height is three microns, right? Your base comes in to be a hair over um, one micron, right? If I take a 14 degree bevel, height, three microns, always the same. Right? Angle appears 14 degrees. My base is just about three quarters of a micron across. So you can see the edge width here, 14 degrees, is much smaller than it is with 20 degrees. And I can tell you that a 20 degree blade is not going to feel as sharp to me as a 14 degree blade. Right? So the people telling me that like bevel angle doesn't matter. It does matter. It, it absolutely matters. It matters with every sharp tool ever made, right? It, it's a major factor in looking into like why things are sharper or duller than other things and so on and so forth. Now here's the caveat. Here's the caveat because it's not just what it seems. I'm gonna need a lot of post-its today, I think, all right? It, Penguin is like, this is getting boring, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no honing. It's just math. So, if you have a razor that you buy, right, and it's 17 degrees, you put a layer of tape on it. And for those of you who don't no, there's a calculator online. It's a spreadsheet, and you punch your numbers in. You need a micrometer. You need a caliper. You need to know how to use it, right? And um, you can get your dimensions and plug it in, and it'll tell you what your bevel angle is, right? 
I'll try to remember to put a link to it in the, in the bottom. So let's just say you put a layer of tape on it, right? For most tape, like what I use, okay? I, I think this stuff is uh, seven mil, All right? It's gonna give me a degree. So it's gonna be 18 degrees, All right? So this is where the bevel angle doesn't matter thing sort of takes a, a shift. I don't believe that most people are going to be able to discern the difference between 17 and 18 degrees on one razor. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I haven't really seen that, to be honest. Um, what I see in differences is like 20 to 17, there's a difference. The nuances along the way, eh, you know, kind of like not as noticeable it's not as drastic so this is where the tape thing people say see it doesn't matter well it does matter because if you keep honing on tape the dimension the width of your blade is going to decrease the width of the spine does not so eventually 17 is was starting with tape it's 18 but eventually you're going to be pushing up to 20 in theory i've yet to actually see anybody hone a razor that much for regular use and create that eventuality i i just haven't seen it so in that regard it doesn't matter okay i i don't care about tape i don't get into that whole fucking thing about tape bevel angle matters yeah sure 20 degrees sucks 17 degrees is okay 15 degrees might be too steep for a blade so in that sense it matters this is what i found by my hands-on use testing experimenting over and over and over and over and over again okay like repeatedly like a couple dozen few dozen times it's like i've done it a lot right i there's a couple of videos with gold dollars where you can see the work i've done on the spine i tape the blade i put the thing on a diamond plate and i grind the hell out of it some people use a belt grinder or something or a bench sander I, I don't have one of them so i do everything manually it sucks but I needed to know. I needed to find out why the bevel angle was or wasn't important. It is important. Now, here's another caveat. <laughs> if I have a 17-degree bevel and I hone it, and then I have the exact same razor and it has a 20-degree bevel and I hone it, okay, so I already told you the 17-degree version is going to shave better. However, if I hone the 17-degree version up to like an 8K Norton, but then I take the 20 degree version and I put it on some like diamond paste. What happens? I tell you the 20 degree blade is going to like cut. It's going to cut a lot. I'm not going to like the feel of it because I hate diamond edges. But the reality is, is that blade is now going to cut. It will not cut as good as a 17 degree bevel put on diamond, but it'll cut way better than it did just off the stone. This is my experience too. I'm just not going to like the feel of it. So it's not just edge width. It's not just bevel angle. There's another condition that matters a lot. Now up here, if I just draw that little section where the apex is, right? Bevel continues out that direction. This is my edge width line, right? This is three microns distance from here to here right here at the tip if you keep blowing that up and blowing that up and blowing that up on the magnification you know we all want to think that well some people talk as though the blade is a perfect line so this would be the edge right here Right, this will be where the bevel meets the grind, okay? And this whole thing is your bevel. Everyone wants to think it's it's like a line, and it's not. It, it, under magnification, it's like like this. No, really. Okay, so if I told you, we're gonna go through a lot of post-its. All right, if I blow that up and I blow it up and I blow it up, you'll find that some edges are more pointy <laughs> than others, and some are actually a little bit rounded. This is like at over 2000K optical resolution, you know, not this computer generated, like whatever. I'm, I'm talking about like 
that's actually what you're looking at. And while nothing is ever actually a perfect point, I'm just doing this to be relative. Okay. Which one do you think is going to cut better? Well, I'm going to tell you it's that one. Okay. And that may seem obvious, but here's the thing. So along with, you know, your angle, along with your edge width, apex condition, let's call it that. All right. So it's a lot of stuff. It all factors in. And, and it gets confusing to people because there's a lot of guys who pretend they know what they're talking about. They just make shit up as they go along. And uh, they, they say stuff and it's not clear. So maybe even if they aren't wrong, they're not clear. So they, people get confused. So, for example, you've seen this razor, right? Look at the bevel on that thing. It's like monstrous, right? It's a near wedge. I honed it without tape. This is more of a wedge, right? So this is like 6.8. This is like 7.8. This is, I caught a hollow, it's 8.8. Eight. Then I have a full hollow, 8.8. Eight. For the sake of argument, let's pretend that all of these blades have a 17 degree bevel. Which one of these blades caught a hollow? near wedge, full hollow. I, I don't know. It's probably quarter hollow, right? Eighth hollow, maybe. Um, which of these three grinds with a 17 degree bevel, which one has a thinner or thicker, thinner, thinnest or thickest edge width? Remember that joke question when you were in school? Which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of lead? 17 degrees is 17 degrees is 17 degrees. No matter what, if each of these blades has a 17 degree bevel, they don't. But if they did, okay, edge width would be the same. If all else is created equal. And what I'm talking about is, if you're measuring the bevel, if H equals 3 microns, and this is your apex, they all have 17 degree bevels, the grind doesn't matter. Going back behind this 3 micron thing, Okay, if I go behind it far enough, sure, look at the size of this bevel. This bevel comes all the way up to here. It's like a quarter of an inch, all right? At this point, the quarter of an inch mark that does not exist on this blade, okay, because it's a hollow grind, okay, it's going to be thicker, right? But you, you got to create a baseline. You got to create... If you're going to have a discussion and you're going to talk about comparative sharpness, you have to establish a set of parameters that are consistent and constant between all of the blades. So that's why 17 degrees is 17 degrees is 17 degrees. People say wedges never get thin enough. If I have a 17 degree bevel on a wedge, it's the same, period. Yeah, sure, I'm probably going to wind up with a ginormous bevel like this. But my edge width at three microns behind the apex is going to be exactly the same as if the blade was a full hollow. So people talk about the geometry of the grind as though it has some kind of relationship with sharpness, and it doesn't. It just doesn't, okay? In reality, in reality, okay, in reality, it's not so finite. Okay, so the reason that like things go on with in the course of discussion where you have to be flexible and you have to like sort of, you know, take things in stride. Bevel angle is not consistent. Your razors are handmade. They're not, you know, they're not perfect instruments. 
So on this particular razor, my spine is thinner here than it is here. All right. When I do a bevel angle calculation, I, I take several readings. Okay. And then I kind of average it out. All right. So like this particular razor, all right, maps out at 16.8 as an average. So it's just about, you know, a little short of 17 degrees. And this thing shaves like this is the razor that I did a three pass shave off of my 1.5 K shaft. And, you know, how does this affect us in the real world? You know, the angle, right? I think edge condition actually speaks most. Okay. I think bevel angle supports the edge, the, the actual apex condition, right? Uh, without having the angle where you need it, without having that steep angle or steep enough angle, I think um, apex condition is supported by, you know, the angle overall. Then you have like the makeup of the steel, you have the carbides that are in there, and then you have how was it sharpened, all right? So I hone on j -Nats most of the time. I finish on j -Nats. You know, once there was a guy who used to claim that j uh, left him with edges that seemed uh, more like, it just done on abrasive paste, and he was a big proponent of uh, cuticles. And he thought cuticles were the bomb. And I love honing on cuticles. You know, um, people will tell you that you know honing on a cuticle, you don't get a, as sharp an edge as you do on a JNAT. <sighs> well, that could be true, but a lot has to do with your honing technique, which also speaks to, you know, your sharpness, and that's why testing. You know, you really have to have, I have to have a really stringent, consistent blade to blade to blade to blade level of consistency. It's just got to be there. So I use the same stone, use the same Nagura, use the same whatever. If I'm using synths, it's all got to be the same. You can't stop mixing and matching, right? Because it just won't give you a good read, right? I mean, you, if you want to compare things, you know, you want to compare how sharp a blade can get, you can't hone one time on a JNAT and then another time on, you know, a King 1K. It's just, you got to be smart about it. But, you know, the thing with uh, cuticles, well, you know, the guy who was saying that the JNATs left you with sort of a, you know, that too sharp feeling versus cuticles. I, I don't think he still says that. I think he's on another, um, yeah, he's approaching another level of uh, Ginsu knife salesmanship these days gotten away from whatever it's like you know people tell you stuff because it suits their wallet you know it's like i i don't care if you hone on cuticles or jnats or synths or films or i don't care i don't do this for that okay yeah i sell stuff on etsy but it's not my job it's just something that i do mostly what i do is i talk about theory and i talk about what i do and how i got to where i got to with my understanding so maybe somebody can like make heads or tails out of that and It'll, it'll help them because when I started out, I needed help and it was getting, it was really hard. There were very few people who could like, you know, one guy was yelling basically about doing heel leading strokes, fixing problems. And I, I got him in a PM and I was like, okay, yeah, but why does that happen? And he wouldn't answer me because you know what? He couldn't, he just knows that do this and that happens, which is fine. But I, I kind of need to know why. So my videos have a lot of why in it. So anyway, if you have a JNAT, it's nice hard JNAT. Softer stones are not going to give you the same edge profile. Working on slurry. Some people, you know, I've heard a lot of stories. Some people say that, um, some people in Japan have told me that honing on slurry, um, if this is your apex and like, let's say that's at three micron mark, I'm going to put a dollar line just for imaginary. They say that using slurry hollows out this area. I talk to other people like, yeah, maybe that happens, but it doesn't matter. I can't really say that I've experienced that. I had a measuring tool uh, for a while. I borrowed it. I wasn't, it was like sort of an illegal borrowing. It was somebody's equipment was in for repair and I got to test it out. It's a thing called a nano gauge. It reads down to like nanometers really. And I, I couldn't experience that. I tried with yeah, I tried the convex stone thing. I tried all types of edge profiles. I tried concave stones and convex stones and tried everything. And I did this measuring and um, 
yeah, I, I couldn't pick up on any narrowing of that space behind the apex that people talk about. I, I didn't read that. And I'll tell you why I don't think it matters, even if it's there, because it's just kind of like a Santoko knife with the scallops in the side. It's like, it looks weird, but I don't know. I've had them and it doesn't work any better for me than a regular knife. But anyway, yeah, I've destroyed this post-it, all right? And I'm rambling, I'm sorry. If I have the JNAT and I have a nice angle, it's going to be a little more pointy than, like, say, some other, like a softer stone. But when you have a codicule, it's kind of hard to draw it because it really happens more up at the... It's not... It, codicule becomes more convex, but it's not, it's not really like this. It's as though you had started out with this, but this area up here at the very tip becomes a little convex. Now... It, the edge width doesn't get thicker because you, there's no way to add steel on, all right? And we're talking about finishing steps, so it's like polishing, not mo removing material. That's something else. When people are telling you that, like, you're moving material out behind the bevel when you're on, like, a super, super hard, super, super fine stone. I don't know about you. I don't get swarf on my black arc, so I don't know what the fuck people are talking about sometimes. Oh, yeah, wait, they're just selling you crap for... <clears throat> whatever okay never mind <laughs> so there's going to be that little bit of convexity there and what that speaks to is like before i told you at the very very tip the apex all right sometimes it's more pointy and sometimes it's more blunt and and i think with uh, the codicule you're going to get more of and i'm not going to call it blunt with a codicule okay but you're going to get more of a, a rounding okay into the bevel and I think that's why you don't get that, like, that massive cutting sensation that you get off of a JNAT when you nail it. And you don't get it with a cuticle, but what you do get with a cuticle is a really nice glide on your face and you get a feeling. And it's, you know, it's good enough. It's, it's, and, and that speaks to the next thing. Okay. All right. Something that I'm just editing and I'm sandwiching it in here because I realized I forgot to bring up a point so the edit might be a little choppy something to remember when people start talking about you know how sharp this is sharper this makes it sharper uh, this this bevel angle this abrasive paste this special type of strop or like you know whatever remember something all right there's a the limiting, you know, uh, diminishing returns here that, you, you know, it would make sense to take uh, into consideration for most people, right? Sharper, 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 sharper. Why, 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 why? Okay. Sharp as I can make it, you know, like, to give me the feeling that I'm looking for and everything else. Yes. Okay. But what exactly is it we're talking about? So when someone is telling me, oh, I, I have this stone and it, it does this thing and it makes your edge sharper, it's like, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I don't need a sharper edge than what's on here. I, I don't. So someone telling me they have a way to hone that's going to make this sharper. First, I don't think so. Second, I don't need it. Third, what are you really trying to sell me, man? So if you have... Um, like, let's say that's your cheek, and you have a whisker, right? And you shave, and you shaved it off, and it's flush, right? If you make the edge sharper, it's not going to cut the whisker more flush. Flush is finite. As long as you're cutting smooth and you're cutting flush, you're right where it needs to be. Sharper doesn't give you anything here. You're gaining nothing, right? Now, the next step is if you have a whisker and, you know, you're cutting into it, you need a certain amount of energy to execute the cut. It doesn't cut itself. Once you achieve effortless cutting, in other words, your 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 cutting is just smooth. You're always going to feel like friction and stuff, and comes from a lot of different things. But once your cutting is, let's call it, free of hesitation, 
making the edge sharper doesn't mean that you're going to cut with less than no hesitation because no hesitation is finite. All right, the other thing, right, that I wanted to mention about uh, bevel angles before I get back to the regularly scheduled programming is when you're actually doing the measuring. And this is something that like every other person seems to get wrong, all right? So let's say you want to get a little deeper involved and you want to measure your, your bevel angle, okay? You're not measuring the entire width of the blade, okay? You are measuring from the apex of the edge to the top of the spine wire, okay? So basically what you're doing is, is you're mapping a triangle to here. A lot of people, they, um, they do is, they're, they're measuring from here to here, and that's wrong. So basically, when we're talking about, you know, edge width and, you know, the scooping out behind the, the bevel, whether or not it's actually there, you know, my question is, is like, would it actually be like really helpful? And it, I, I look for it and I couldn't experience it. And, you know, I've heard other things uh, over the years. Uh, there was one guy who said that if you hone on a Jane attic, it work hardens the steel so your edges are harder. And like, that's eh, just fucking bullshit, you know. And there always seems to be a never-ending supply of people like hawking shit and ideas with all this drama behind it. And, you know, um, it, it's usually aimed at, at selling you a, a product or at least their brand, or maybe it's just ego feeding. But most of the time when people come up with like all of this stuff, they pull a relic out of the uh, archives of shaving and they're like, this is the best thing in the world. Look, in 1932, they devised, no, no, you know, just please, you know, I like to keep things simple. I don't like to get caught up in nonsense. All right. I keep my stones flat. I, I keep my bevel angles down. I keep my apex condition in place. And I, I stay away from too much finishing on paste. I mean, I hardly ever do it, to be honest. It's mostly just testing is why I have paste. I mean, I have a couple of pasted drops and a paddle drop, but it, I use them more for like tools than anything else. But occasionally I'll put a razor on it. I don't like the way it feels, even though it'll like make uh, a subpar angle serviceable to some degree, you know. So, and that's what I do to, to keep my stuff straight, right? Um, works for me. It just fucking works for me. You know, I, I tried a bunch of stuff. I've made jigs to put curves into stones, and I've had convex contours of... I had that hone from Japan. I don't know if you ever saw one. It, it's completely convex this way from here to here. Um, a lot of people, like, swore by it. I tried it, sent it back, was like, no, nah, dog, uh, <laughs> not for me. Uh, the current iteration of things that are, you know, uh, pimped by Solingen and what have you, all of that stuff. It, none of none of it really speaks to my main concerns. It does not speak to my bevel angle. It does not speak to my apex condition. It does not speak to um, my finished result. It's not like I haven't tried uh, all of these things. I, I have tried razors honed on all of those stones and try my own and you know i what i'm doing for me here this is what like work, works best for me that's all just that but you know to like draw a picture about like the impact of things let's say you know for example um i'll do it this way i'm not even going to try and draw a circle in front of you because it'll come out looking like an orange pit all right so let's say that's a whisker Gillette will tell you that whiskers are, I don't know, whatever, microns. Uh, if you read about human hair, you, you find that they go from like 17 microns all the way up to 150. Theoretically, theoretically, I have not measured it, but theoretically, I've read a number of sources. The average diameter of a male whisker, average 75 microns. Okay, so... Obviously, the circle is not 75 microns. It's fucking ginormous, okay? So let's just say, for example, 
because I don't feel like getting a ruler. Let's just say the diameter here, all right, is two inches, but it's representing 75 microns. I'm making a model, okay? Let's just say your edge width Right, your edge width. Yeah, there's the rest of the bevel. I'm talking about edge width. Okay, that little spot, three microns behind your apex. If you had a 17 degree blade, the edge width facing this is in the ballpark of one thirty second of an inch. At that point, if someone's going to try and tell me that taking a a, a little proverbial short black hairs you know what i'm talking about right worth of material out behind that spot is going to have some kind of impact on cutting this big fucking ginormous log of hair I i'm going to look at you and i'm going to say okay dude thanks have a nice day because i'm not buying into it because it doesn't make sense it's one of the things about this world shit's got to make sense Logic and reason, the laws of physics, all have to make sense in order for me to buy into it. It just can't be this outlandish story where you took, you know, um, a molecule's worth of material away behind that three micron mark, and now you're felling this 75 micron log more easily. Come on. Do I look stupid? No, I don't look stupid. Okay, I don't. Trust me. You can't see me. All you get to see is my hands because this is what's important. People like bark sometimes. We never see you. All we see are these talking hands. You know why? Because this is what's important. My face is not that important. It's not even that good, but it's not important. My voice, what you hear, that's kind of important because that's how I get my message across. Long time ago, photographic principle, when you're shooting people, specifically like people who, who are famous, you want the largest amount of your photograph occupied by their face, facial recognition. It's just one of those things. I was a photographer for a really long time, so I play it in my videos. Now, it's not conventional. Anyway, so, you know, th that's that's my spiel on beveling. You know, so like to recap everything, you know, too long, didn't read, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Your angle is important, but you got to be sensible about it. If you use tape, it's probably fine, okay? If you're going to use tape and you're going to hone 400 times between now and the uh, end of the season, you're probably going to want to have to grind the spine down. But for most people, most days, most raises, putting a layer of tape isn't going to mean shit to anybody, all right? I like to baseline stuff and work with the most narrow angle I can. But if I have a razor that's 17 degrees and it shaves great, I'm not going to grind a, a degrees worth off and make it 16 degrees. That's just stupid. If I have a gold dollar, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to grind that thing down to 16. And then when I'm done, I'm going to throw it away because it's still a gold dollar. But uh, I certainly don't want to shave with it at 20 degrees. All right. So bevel angle is important. Apex condition. How do I finish? How do I hone? Have I set a good bevel? Have I really removed my striations from step to step? This is what's going to speak to your edge condition. Is every time you lay down striations from any grit, all right, the next the next grit you want finer, you want to block them out. Okay. And you want to have the best apex condition that you can possibly get. Okay. Those are the two main things. Working with those two things and keeping them in check, pretty much, you know, as long as you have a quality blade, good steel. You know, steel matters. For sure it matters. But, you know, I don't want to get into steel right now because that's like another 10 videos, all right? Sheffield steel from the mid-1800s, grand stuff. Not quite as hard as stuff, you know, made later on in time, but it, it holds a great edge. Uh, that's for sure. And the carbide structure in those steels is um, kind of special in a way that you're going to get, you know, you can get a, a very, very, very smooth type of cut that you might not find in some other harder steels. Or with the harder steels, it'll be more difficult to achieve that level of smoothness, right? Carbides are another story. But quality blade matters. Bevel angle.
apex condition. Those two factors, and I'm going to say apex condition is a huge deal because you can take a great beveled razor, and if you don't do a great job honing it, then it's just going to suck ass. Anyway, you know, so that's that for now. That's all I got, right? Um, I hope this wasn't too boring. You know, I'm not going to do any honing. I, I don't think it speaks to the topic. It's just going to, like, make the video longer. So listen, um, I'm sure I forgot stuff. I'm sure I pissed people off. I'm sure, you know, I didn't cover everything. And I'm just one person. And so listen, that, that's all I got. I'm sorry this ran on so long. I just wanted to air out some stuff about the bevel angle. It was very confusing to me in the beginning. And I think that in order, you know, you always hear me talk about having fun. I think in order to have fun, you have to get like the frustrating stuff has to be like pushed to the side. You have to break through that, that shroud and cloak of darkness and, and not knowing you have to get through. And a lot of people just, I don't think explain things very well. They just, I just heard somebody talking about how wedges have wider, um, edge widths because they're wedges and he just told like you know thousands of people that and he's just wrong what matters is you know basically your bevel angle and what the bevel angle of the wedge in question is not the fact that it's a wedge or a full hollow that that's misinformation that's not understanding blade geometry that's just perpetuating the problems all right so listen again you know i've always been into telling everyone to have fun let me just post it off my stuff. <laughs> and I mean that. This is all about fun. The people who are like, who are standing around, pointing fingers, yelling at each other, like calling each other names openly. And it's like, dude, not really cool. Not really cool at all. Keep it fun. Get some blades out. Get some stones out. Get everything wet. Hone up a storm. Have a good time. And until next time, take care. Talk to you soon.